Okay, first we've got to define ether. And the Michael Samorla experiment did not disprove ether. It just disproved they couldn't measure it with that instrument. So ether is all the subatomic stuff that exists. So ether is a catch-all term for all the subatomic everything. Therefore, that there are different qualities of ether. And if you go back and read the original literature about the ether, and I did, I gathered a lot of quotes from all the scientists, from, well, not all of them, but a lot of the scientists from that time. And when you read them, you say, well, they're all talking about a different kind of ether that has different characteristics and different, different states of energy. Which ether do you want to talk about? And Keeley made a variety of types of ether. Today we would call them plasma. There's all different kinds of plasmas. They're not all the same. There's all different kinds of ethers. In fact, he said there's an infinite variety of them. So taking whatever specific ether he used, he could do certain things with it or get it to do certain things. And he used it as a working fluid in his machines, um, much like we use uh, refrigerants in refrigerators and air conditioners. You know, the working fluid is part of the mechanism that makes it work. And if you ignore, if you took the, the refrigerant out of the refrigerator, it won't work. And you look at it, it says, well, the only moving part in here is, uh, you know, a compressor. And since we don't, we have removed from our awareness this idea of refrigerant, well, it can't work. I mean, there's no physical Newtonian mechanical way this thing work <clears throat> set up like this. And taking that uh, absurd metaphor further, Keeley used ether in his machines as the working fluid, just like we do in refrigerators. And if we removed the ether from his equations, from his machines, it'd just be a hunk of metal. Wouldn't work. Okay, different types of ether are sympathetic to the mind force. So he could draw a symbol on the wall and motor across the room and start. So there's a link between uh, the different energy states of these different kinds of quantum entities. And they have a lot of characteristics. Uh, we don't know what they all are, but we know some of them. You know, they expand and contract. They're hot and cold. They, you know, light and heavy, mass and less mass. And uh, keeping those dichotomies present is what this book's about, is the, is the polar dynamics involved. So if you get a gas that expands and contracts without changing its chemical makeup, well, that's an almost an ideal working fluid because you expand and contract expanding, and that's what we want. We want that periodic motion. 